Hi, so last week we had a look at some serious parallel network problems uh, which were a little bit more complicated in as much as they weren't laid out as you would normally expect them to be. This is a, a sample solution for problem 9 and the reason I've chosen this is because there's a bit of a trick in this question. So what we have to do is solve the circuit and fill in the table. Okay. First thing we have to do is to try and simplify the circuit a bit so that we can actually uh, break it down more easily into its series and parallel uh, components. Uh, where I suggest you do this is by starting off uh, with the power supply and you don't really have to worry about because it's in the centre here you can actually move it so that it's in the uh, on the left hand side. So let's start off by doing that. We have our power supply 32 volts um, and we have our positive and negative connections to it. So if we look at the diagram above Let's start off with the easier side and we'll look at R4 initially and you can see that from the positive side of the, of the power supply it goes to one end of R4 and the negative side through this link it goes to the other side. So R4 sits directly across the power supply. So let's draw that in. So now we have R4. So the other one we have on this side of the power supply is R5. And this is a bit of a strange one because if you look at this, um, this is our negative side of the power supply, which has a direct link to here. So R5 has, in effect, 0 volts at this side, and it also has 0 volts at this side. So R5 sits underneath this part of the diagram. So here we have R5, and in effect we have 0 volts at this end, and we have zero volts at this end. So R5 has no voltage drop across it and it has no current flowing through it. And as it has no current flowing through it, then in actual fact there'll be no power uh, dissipated in that resistor. So now we've got the uh, right hand side of this diagram sorted out. Let's look at the left hand side. And what's the best place to start? Well, the top end, the positive side, there's actually two resistors come off it. At the bottom end, there's just the one. Okay, and the bottom one goes to this node here, which is shared by both of those. So let's have a look at uh, putting R2 in next, and it goes from the negative side of the power supply across. R2 comes across from the negative side of the power supply, um, and that this node here joins up to both those resistors which are connected to the positive side of the power supply. To finish off, we can stick those two in. So now we have a simplified layout showing how the resistors fit together in the various series and parallel networks. Uh, now it makes it much easier to start simplifying. I would recommend when you're doing this that you do draw the diagrams as you go through the simplification process, because if you don't do that, you're going to get in a tangle with it. OK, so First thing we can do is look at these two resistors here, which are two resistors in parallel, and we can simplify by sticking one resistor in to replace both R1 and R3. What I've actually done is I've replaced R1 and R3 by a single resistor, and R5, because we've determined R5 uh, has no effect on the circuit at all, I've actually omitted that. So R13 it's going to replace R1 and R3. And because those two are in parallel, we use the formula 1 over R13 equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R3. And we can then substitute in the values. R1 is 790 ohms, R3 is 8.6 times 10 to the power 3. So just by calculating the answer, 1 over R1 to 3 equals 1.3821 times 10 to the minus 3. Now remember that's 1 over R13, so we need to invert this to get the answer for R1, 3. So R1, 3 is equal to 723.536 ohms. Now we've done that, we can look at our circuit and see what we can simplify next. And these two resistors here are in series. Uh, so let's replace both of those with one effective resistor, R1, 
comma 2 comma 3. So we've replaced R13 and R2 with one resistor with an effective resistance R123 is equal to R13 plus R2. Now we know what R13 is and we know what R2 is so we can substitute those into the formula like so and then simplify it to find the answer. So R123 is equal to 1723.536 ohms. So now we just have the two resistors in parallel. The effective resistance R123 which replaced the rest of the network that we've taken out and R4. Two resistors in parallel. So let's replace that with one which we're going to call R1234. So if we use 1 over R1234 is equal to 1 over R123 plus 1 over R4 then we can find the effective resistance of the whole circuit. So let's substitute in the values. Substituting in the values we get this uh, then simplifying it we get 1 over R1234 equals this value here and remember this is 1 over so we have to invert it to find the final effective resistance. R1234 equals 966.419 ohms. So we've worked our way down now and we've simplified the circuit as much as we can. So now let's work out what IT, the current flowing through the circuit. Start off with V equals IR. Um, we're going to transpose that for I. So the total current is equal to V which is 32 volts divided by R1234, the effective resistance of the circuit. Substituting in the values, 32 divided by 966.419 gives the total current flowing through the circuit as 0.03311 amps or 33.11 milliamps. So now we can move back up the circuit using that information to help us find some more values in this part. So moving back up the circuit, we know that the voltage across R4 and R123 is 32 volts. So we can actually work out now the current flowing through R4 and the current flowing through the rest of the network. So let's have a look at that and see what we can work out from that. To calculate the current flowing through R4, we know the voltage, we know the resistance, so we can just use the formula I4 equals V over R4. Let's substitute in the values and see what we get. I4 is equal to 32 over 22 kilo ohms, and we can simplify that. So we get I4 is equal to 0 0.0145 amps or 14.5 milliamps. We can do exactly the same for the current flowing through R123 network using the formula I123 equals V over the effective resistance R123. Let's substitute in the values and see what we end up with. V is 32 volts. The effective resistance of R123 is 1723.536 ohms. Calculating that out, we end up with 18.57 milliamps. Now at this stage, just to make sure we've made uh, no mistakes, what we can do is to just do a quick check. And we know that the current flowing through the circuit will split here. So you'll have I4 going down there and I123 going down there. So I total should equal I4 plus I123. And if you add those together, 14.5 plus 18.57 we should get approximately 31.11 milliamps, which we do, so that's good. Having worked out these two values of current, we can now feed those back into the next diagram up. And we know now I4, and we know I123. And I123 is the same current flowing through the two series resistors. So I123 flowing through R2, I4 flowing through R4, we can now work out the voltage drop across R2. So that gives us our, our values directly for the table. But also we can work out the voltage drop across R13, which we will need to calculate the final bit of the problem. To calculate the voltage drop 
across R2, we're going to use Ohm's law. Uh, so let's have a look at the, the formula and the substitution. The voltage drop across R2 is equal to the current, I123, multiplied by R2, which is 1 kilo ohms. Giving us a value, the voltage drop across R2 is 18.57 volts. For the voltage drop across R13 network, we have the current I123 and the effective resistance of R13, which we calculated earlier as 723.536. So substituting those in, uh, voltage drop across R13 as 14.436. And as a quick check, we know that the voltage drop between there and there across that series re uh, resistor network should be 32 volts. And if you add those together, that's what you actually get. So we know the voltage drop across R1 and R3. We know the values of R1 and R3. So we can now work out the current flowing through R1 and R3 by using the formula I1 is equal to the voltage drop across R1 divided by the resistance R1. So substituting in the values, I1 comes out at 17.04 milliamps. We can do the same thing for I3. So doing exactly the same thing, I3 comes out at 1.565 milliamps. So at this stage, uh, we've gone straight the way down. We've worked out the voltage drops across the various components. We've also worked out the current flowing through them. So we can now go back and stick those values into the table. So we can substitute in to the table all the values that we've calculated so far. And uh, we're nearly there. So what we have to fill in the table now is the power dissipated in the various resistors. The formula that springs to mind initially is the power dissipated equals the voltage drop across the resistor times the current flowing through the resistor. However, there's a slight problem with this because when it comes to the values that we have in the table, we calculated all the values of I and the majority of values of V as well. So when you're doing the power calculations, whenever possible, it's best to use known values. Now the problem is the known values we have are for the resistance. So we need to uh, get rid of the current in the formula and use resistance so that we're using as many known values as possible. Now we know that the current flowing through the resistor is equal to V over R, so we can substitute that into the power formula to get rid of I, which leaves us with power equals voltage squared divided by resistance. So what we're going to do now is use that formula for all these resistors and fill in the table. Now I don't intend to go through those one by one because you're quite capable of doing that yourself. Okay, so I'll just substitute in the values and see what we get. These are the values that are calculated using P equals V squared over R. If you compare that with the answer sheet, you'll see that there are some slight discrepancies between the two. But this will be down to the rounding errors uh, that we've used throughout the calculations. So hopefully you can see that by using this method of simplifying the circuit to start off with, and then reducing the number of resistors in the network so you have one, eff one effective resistance at the end. Then substituting in values as you go back up again, um, that this makes the problem much more straightforward and you're much less likely to make mistakes. So it's not difficult, it's just time consuming. Um, and again, draw the diagrams.